With Falcon coach John O'Grady and John, the Falcons up, opened up their 2009 season a couple of weeks ago with a 28-24 loss to St. John's at Raymer Field. It was a great game, close game. Uh, the stats were all pretty even. But your thoughts on the game, John? Yeah, it, it was a very, very exciting game. Great atmosphere, huge crowd, maybe the biggest we've ever had. Uh, a lot of people in red, uh, both sides of the ball, of course. But um, uh, and in many ways, pleased with our offense. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, the previous week about how strong their defense had been over the years. And we had darn near 400 yards of total offense, ran the ball well on them, uh, and at times really threw well. Um, and, you know, defensively put our D in a bad situation right at the end of the game uh, where they were able to plug in for the, the winning score. But there were an awful lot of good things uh, in that game, both offensively, defensively, and even with our special teams. So we're, we're, we're very excited right now and working very hard for this upcoming game. John, looking at a couple of the uh, individual players named as the team's offensive player of the week was senior tight end Ryan Hansen. Coming off an injury from last year, caught five passes for 61 yards. Four of his receptions went to the first down, so you're obviously looking at him in those key situations. Can you talk about Ryan's play a little bit? Well, Ryan has really been a star waiting to happen throughout his entire career. He's been medical redshirted, then he missed the first two games last year with Mono, came back for a couple, and then broke his foot uh, in the Whitewater game. So you know, we, we've had years where we just haven't been able to use him for those reasons, but he in practice just the other day, he made a big play in our two-minute drill and caught a ball over the middle and went about 40 yards with it. He, he, he can really block and he can run and he can catch. He, he is the all-around tight end. Maybe some people don't think he's big enough, but uh, you don't have to be big to catch the ball, and he blocks a lot bigger than he is. So, you know, he really played a good game and has been practicing really well. Looking on the defensive side, John Sr. and Derek Nettie was the defensive player of the week. He had three solo and six total tackles. More importantly, he had great pressure on the quarterback at one and a half sacks for a loss of 19 yards. Can you talk about Derek's play? Yeah, I think you know Derek is a guy we've had our eye on for a long time. He's, he's very unique. He's got some height, uh, extremely lean guy, and he can flat out run. He is fast and I think if he stays healthy he'll be one of the leading sack uh, defensive linemen in, in our conference and you know to, to beat uh, St. John's linemen for one and a half sacks that's pretty good because they are such athletic guys and it tells you what kind of ability he has. Uh, he is a senior and I know he's very excited about it this year and has really started off very strong. On the special team side, we had a freshman, our punter, kicker, Drake Klatt, was the player of the week. He averaged 40 yards on two punts and had five kickoffs and averaged 63 yards every, every kickoff. New to the program, John, but uh, played well in his first college game. Yeah, he, he is a guy that has tremendous potential. One of the strongest pure legs that I've been around, and he's got height. Uh, he looks a lot like the prototypical NFL punter because those guys are getting taller and taller. They have long legs. Uh, Drake probably got that uh, that recognition as much for his kickoffs as anything because he drove the ball every time inside the five, and uh, he can also get it up hang time about four seconds, which is really important. It really helps your coverage unit. Uh, St. John started a number of times inside their 30, and I think that's a good goal as a kickoff unit nowadays when we're kicking from the 30. He had a decent day punt and really didn't hit the ball well, but had some good bounces, and you know, obviously... We're working on all those phases with him, uh, getting ready for Northwestern. Talking about Northwestern, John, this weekend the tra Falcons travel to the Twin Cities, play Northwestern College. The Eagles are 1-1 one one overall, coming off a loss at Simpson College last weekend, but they're a team that can put up a lot of points. What yep. do you know about the Eagles? Two great stars in their quarterback and their wide receiver, number 27. They really hurt us last year, uh, quite honestly surprised us. I think in terms of uh, what our players were thinking, we as coaches saw it on film. Uh, th this quarterback is like a little old Frank Tarkenton. He'll scramble. He's not real tall. He needs to get out of the pocket. He needs to run bootleg passes and get out of there. He needs to sprint out. And then if he doesn't have anybody open, he'll slam his brakes on and reverse the field, and he'll run all over the place. So, uh, you know, th those two guys can do a lot of damage as they did last year. Uh, defensively, not a, they're not a real big team physically, so we're really going to try to establish the run, which we did do very well against them last year. 
but we also have to be good with our play action passing and you know Ryan Lucenheide needs to have another good game. Special teams, you know, that's an area I think we can really be successful at this week in studying what we do and studying what they do. Uh, it, it's an area I have high expectations. I, I hope we can block a PAT or two or a field goal, uh, maybe a punt, and I think our kickoff return should have a good day and our kickoff team should do well. So, that you know, that's a phase uh, I've been around coaches who talk about if you win two of the three phases, you should win the game. That's a phase I, I have high expectations for. John, good luck to the Falcons this weekend at Northwestern. We'll be talking to you next week. For Falcon Sports, this is Jim Thies.